I think that's certainly something that we can see. He's, done, he's certainly been picking up his fair share of kills yeah. um, in, in the matches that have led up to this. Definitely. Um, you know, picking picking the operators that enable him to be able to get those kills. So, yeah, like you say, maybe a little bit of a role flex there um, and just figuring out where everybody lies. But we are now going to be moving into the game and checking out some operator bands. Yeah, pretty standard bands coming out already. The glass band coming out from Orglas here on the border. Very, very typical. I don't think we're going to see too many surprises. I would like for Rise Nation to potentially ban out a Heart Breacher here, just because that would shake up things. And as I said before, there's no reason for you to hide anything here. This is all or nothing. If you lose here, that's it. You go home, nothing. And there's Blackbeard ban. That's pretty typical coming out from Rise Nation, so no surprises there. Blackbeard is very, very powerful on border. There's a lot of long angles you can hold, and it's just really impossible to contest them. Yeah, like I say, I think a hard breach ban there would have really thrown a cat among the pigeons. But uh, we're going to see the Jaeger ban come out, which certainly opens up a lot of opportunity on the attacking side. Um, I'm expecting it's a it's an acid counter ban. Yeah, so I'm, I'm so expecting specific. to see a hell of a lot of throwables now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and maybe even some Ying into the mix because she's made her way through as well. I'm going to close things out with a Maestro ban. So Echo on the table and available. Yeah, definitely interesting coming out there. We'll see how it does go down as we are going to move into the action phase here. Well, round number one first as we get underway. And we'll see how it goes down. Rise Nation take on August in our first map here on border in the North American Qualifiers lower bracket final. Let's get right into it. And we're going to see an Armory Lockers defense of Archives first as well. What do you think of the defense? What do you think of the lineups? Um, I Maybe a little bit surprised not to see a mirror being played here. Uh, mirror making a way through the BAM phase. Maybe there we're going to see it. Acid's going to do me a solid there. He's going to six pick off the Echo onto the Mirror. Um, but I'd quite like to see both, I guess. I'd quite like to see both the Echo and the Mirror on that lineup. And uh, Vandal there going to waste absolutely no time taking advantage of the of the uh, Jaeger ban. And he's going to be bringing some Candelas on Ying. Yeah, this is a very interesting strategy coming up for Rise. So they banned the Jaeger and they just decided, uh, well, we're just going to take all nades and Candelas and just Zofias. Okay. Just absolutely anything you can throw into their site and use to just completely destroy people or just kill them outright. Because there's a lot of good nade spots here on Armory. Um, something that a lot of Latin American teams are doing doesn't tend to happen that much in other regions, but you know, in like other games, you have like pre placed nade spots where you're like lining it up with parts of the map. There's a lot of those good nade spots you can do here. I'm talking about at the top of the skylight just outside of office and. Also, just on the doorway, uh, going into archives, there's good nade spots there. And on the locker sandwich window, if you go below, you can get some good nade spots, even getting all the way into small office from below. So, I really love this from Rise Nation. My only issue is that maybe a little bit over investment, because it's going to concentrate a lot more on their info gathering than anything. Yeah, and I think that Orglus have prepared for this in a way, having brought the dock and the rook. Um, obviously anticipating some sort of uh, you know, nade assault, if you will, and a lot yeah. of throwables there. The Rook Armour is obviously going to give you a little bit more protection. Uh, the Stim Pistol from Dark, very handy for reviving enemies at a distance. Um, so they're obviously playing into this a little bit, they've accepted it, um, and I think that's probably a good reason as to why they've brought both those operators, because it is also common that you do see both of them uh, on the board at the same time. We've got Yeti currently just playing inside security room. He's got a couple of holes open to his back, which is going to allow him to peek down these stairs. He's just going to narrowly miss out on that kill onto uh, onto Ghost at the top of these stairs there. Almost the kill that was, but not quite Ghost there. Just getting a bit aggressive, peeking the angle, and the Candelas are going to come in already. Vandal's going to pick up his first kill onto Maman, and that's going to be Rook out of the picture. Yeti, though, going to refrag that. Obviously, the drone work there was not sufficiently done, or maybe the call-out, because it should have been known that Yeti was there in that point. He's going to be able to stim himself up after challenging onto break room. Meanwhile, Crazy is going to pick up a kill of his own onto Hyper, taking out the book. So, in the opening half of the round, things are looking pretty good for Orglis at this stage. Oh, come on. Beastly just going to fumble, and he's going to drop the nade all the way below him. That's a massive waste of utility coming out. Well, it's crazy to run all the way out, living up to his namesake. We'll take England off the board, and you've already lost your Harbridge as well. This is looking terrible for Rise because no one's got control here, and they've lost Diffuser as well on top of that. Yet he's still holding down, and I'm assuming he's got a bulletproof camera onto 90 to peek out that, that angle. That's where you would normally play the mirror. So Yeti going to be still playing around onto CC where he can. 
and try and get as many kills as he can. Just waste time because he has control of the diffuser. He has no reason to play as aggressive. He's got crazy holding his cross as well. And Ryze are running out of time. Yeah, it all seemed to go very wrong very quickly for Ryze there. I think they tried to they tried to take all the CCTV, but just didn't quite manage to root Yeti out of his position. And he's proven how valuable Doc with a couple of stim pistols can be in sort of commanding an area. Uh, Beast there is going to jump in, but Yeti is going to pick up yet another kill. Ghost this time going to be there to get the trade, but Acid trading it straight back, taking Ghost, and that's August with round number one. Great round coming up from August. Really well played from Yeti in particular. Just completely holding down CC. And I think just poor info coming out from Rise Nation there. I mean, they wasted a lot of utility to try and get control of CC. He threw all three Candelas in there. And then he gets traded. And no one's there to trade him instantly. I feel like Rise were all over the place in that. They should be trading a lot more. They should have that control a lot earlier coming through. That just didn't happen for them. And they fell apart. And of course... Yeti on the dock, that's not an engagement you really want to take. No, I mean, I just can't believe that the, the call-out didn't come from, from Ghost, that that's where Yeti was playing, because I don't know if there's maybe some confusion, because um, there was a three three armor that got taken out at that point, and it, there could have been a bit of crossover if they yeah. didn't know there was two playing in that room in CCTV. So maybe just a little bit of confusion there, like Defense, you say, but certainly something that you know, attributed to costing them that round um, quite heavily. So we're going to see Orglus now go back down, or not back down, but down for the first time, should I say, onto ventilation. Uh, very similar lineup again, but this time choosing to bring the Valkyrie and the Legion. Uh, and not, uh, not two ACOG this time so yes he's going to keep all the dock uh, but my man's going to pick up the bandit my big thing here is that traditionally border a little bit defender sided i say it's like 51 40 now depending on the bands but it's funny i say that because the jaeger's band this should be very attacker sided right now especially with the lineup that rise is taking here and the fact that they've not found their first round yet is going to punish them. If Orgles continue to take rounds on this defense, they're going to completely swipe out Ryze when they move on to the attack. It's, de it's definitely a little bit strange as well that they've, they've not actually playing the operators that are available to them in Echo and Mirror. Um, Mirror, I guess, maybe not so popular downstairs for ventilation, but certainly in Echo. I mean, you can use an Echo absolutely anywhere. It's two more cameras. It's a little bit of info. info. You've got to be asking yourself, would it maybe have been worth to bring the Echo as opposed to bringing the Valkyrie, perhaps? Um, I, I think that the Echo, and some people may call me crazy, but Twitch chat, stay with me here. I think the Echo is a good counter to me. Yeah, definitely. You got the Yokai drone, so you're able to get a bit of information pre, pre the push, you know? Well, the Yokai drone where you're gonna place see them. where the push is coming down, because obviously it doesn't get flashed, yeah. because it's a drone. So it can see where the push is going down, it can hit the Ying with the um, Echo Dispersion, and uh, and yeah, like the Ying's not going to be able to push off that, because if you sprint, you're just going to make it worse for yourself. And there we go, already opening up Triple Wall and getting his way in, it's going to be Hyper, it's getting all the way in and through onto Offices, and it's going to be Ghost who's hold down at East Stairs. This is good progress, this is much tighter coming out from Rise, because before what they were trying to do, they were trying to go for a traditional box take, I think if you're taking the Havana here, and you're taking a Ying, an office take is much, much better for you, considering that triple wall also wasn't reinforced. Yeah, you've really got to establish a foothold in the map at this point, and I think they've chosen to make that offices, which is a great place to start from, but they are going to have to go on to deal with CCC, and they're going to have to come up with something to move Yeti out of his corner, um, playing just behind 90 there in CCTV. But it's like maybe a little bit of a rotate coming out in England there, just getting ready to make his way into Tellers. A little bit of drone work coming out as well, just to check that the coast is clear. You can see that Hyper just making his way in. Um, but, you know, office control there has largely been established. That's going to allow the book to be able to drop down, just start making some holes into bathroom, trying to get the way into the site. A little bit of a slow around this time, but I think it's looking much better from Rise Nation. They seem to be a lot more tight, like you say, in what they're doing. Um, and with this bathroom now being open, it's only going to get easier for them to root their players out of the site. Beastly there, going to pick up a kill. But Yeti is still proving a nuisance inside CCTV, while Vandal has made his way onto the site. And this is pretty dangerous now because Rise have actually got good site control and they should be able to get a plant down at some point. Hyper there is going to pick up a kill onto my man. Acid going to trade it straight back out. Yeti now on the rotate, coming back down. 
the acid there is just going to get peaked by England. Yeti making his way into the bomb site. Shots are going to come down. The plant is going down at this stage. Vandal there desperately trying to find something. Vandal there does desperately find something. Manages to find the head of Yeti. And that was a much better round from Rise Nation. Yeah, great round coming out from Rise instead. There, much tighter played. Just all the way pushing into offices. They got roam control pretty much immediately. And now they're just flank watching. You had Beastly picking up kills on the flank watch while you had just the Ying pushing all the way deep into the site. And uh, I got to say as well, it's kind of surprising that England isn't playing the Ying here. I know that on this team, he does play a more heavier support role, but he's known as Yingland for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's probably one of the most effective uses of Ying that you can make, you know, being able to brute force your way through the side like that. And like you say, with the control that he was able to take and how deep he was actually able to go, it did make it really difficult for August when they were then trying to rotate yeah, back down. Yeah. Yeti was dropping CC hatch. He was already setting up crossfires as, as they were going. So August are going to choose to go back down to the same site. No reason why not at this stage. Um, they certainly weren't a million miles away from that one. But I think with the control that they gave up so early on in offices, I'd like to see if they're able to do anything maybe a little bit differently to hold on to that a little bit longer or if that perhaps just forces Rise Nation to then take CC a little bit better because it seems like August have got a pretty good plan of keeping hold of CCTV control um, which as we said is very important and has produced good kills so far. Yeah no it definitely has um, and that whole like flank watch control the thing that I liked about August's take here sorry Rise Nations' take on Orglus instead of them is that they've used the fact that Orglus had so much set up for event stake and it just didn't come. All they had to do is just open a bathroom, push through that way, ying their way into the site, and they had control. They didn't even need to take control of Armory upstairs. All they have to do is take control of Archives and just hold the flanks. That's exactly what Rise did, and they did it perfect. Yeah, and that's when you see an experienced team that's able to play off the way that the site has been set up um, and make decisions on the fly based on that of how they're, how they're actually going to attack it. Um, Hyper now, you can see, just getting ready to make his way over into offices, just desperately trying to find any sort of Valkyrie camera that may be lurking, but he's going to struggle to get that one up in the dome on the ceiling. As, as crazy, he's keeping a pretty good eye on that just to make sure that no one is sneaking in without him knowing. Although, uh, Hyper now just sort of trying to get a little bit of a one-tap, I guess. Um, some shots do come pretty close there, it did look like, but uh, my man's only going to suffer a small amount of damage there as he uh, as he gets his, himself prepared for this assault. But he's probably going to try and rotate off that because there's no real point in him playing too aggressively there. Um, he's, he's wasted a little bit of time so far, and that's always a good thing. Smoke there just peeking up, trying to find something from beneath. Uh, perhaps maybe catch a drone or maybe just get a couple of shots lined in. I really do like these small murder holes that they're making in the, in the roof there. It just does allow um, a good idea of what's going on up above, uh, as well as trans transferring a little bit of sound as well. And you can see again that Rise don't even need to bother with this CC control. There's something that went terribly for them in the first round where they yinged into CC and they just lost their ying immediately. And they can just get all the way in here. They don't even need to take armory control. They have officers control. They can drop down into tellers. Now they have waiting room control. And they can just slowly start to push in the backside of the site. Rise at this point, though, should start to realize where the take is coming from. I'm not sure if I agree with this wall not being reinforced from August. The passable wall. It, it certainly allows a very easy line of sight, you know, especially with an operator like a Buck or a Sledge, which Rise Nation have got both of, um, just to bust open and put a little bit of pressure onto anyone playing down in customs. Nade there going to come through. Um, I'm surprised we're not seeing more Nade, you know. Maybe we've just not caught it, but it, uh, it doesn't seem like we've had as many as we perhaps should. Hyper there, maybe getting ready to throw a second one. Um, but it seems like Rise Nation are setting themselves up now for a nice execute. We're coming into the final 30 seconds of the round, so they're definitely going to have to do something at this point as, uh, as Brian there. Just maybe retreating back a little bit, getting himself ready to start throwing some smoke canisters. Uh, but my man has gone down in and amongst the chaos. As, uh, as the shots do rain in now from England Ghost there, going to pick up the kill onto Yeti. So it has begun. Acid going to get pretty aggressive onto the Zephyr as she's pulling out a goo mine. So that's going to be another kill there for Crazy on the C4. And Acid's going to make that a double with a kill onto England. Hyper now going to try and do something but gets cut down by Beastly. And it's all going to be left down to Crazy. He does manage to pick up one kill. And another one there for Brian from August. So that's going to be a good round there for the defenders. I think that Rise maybe just left it a little bit too late 
uh, in what they were trying to do in, in terms of execution there. Yeah, it, it was definitely really weird because Ryzation had all the control that they needed. I mean, there was still good plant denial coming out from Oglus, but you can't doubt that the fact that Ryze had so much control there and it all just fell apart so quickly for them. And the fact that Oglus, they still had control of CC, they still had someone playing in there, where, you know, they're just taking advantage of that situation. I, and I mentioned the fact that that passport wall isn't reinforced, so it should allow Ryze to take control of that area very, very quickly. But again, from Ryze, it just kind of feels like a lack of info on their side. I mean, Acid was allowed to play in customs Defenders pretty much for free, despite the wall attack. being open. Um, so it really didn't come to much of, of any, it really didn't come to any meaning in the end of it all. Um, because he was allowed to play there and he managed to pick up two kills from it. So it was a little bit strange. I think that maybe Ryze could have perhaps maybe got a plant down at that point. And that would have been able, that would have been enough then for them to pick up the round. They could have maybe fallen back just a little bit. Because they were well established within events. Um, but I don't think that it was something that they really maybe had the time to do, or maybe it was just a little bit too chaotic um, in, in those final flat. stages. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to see how he does go down as we're going to round number four. He's going to be doing Armory and Archives defense again coming out here from August. It was pretty good from them last time. Let's see how he does go down. I think that, though, that this last defense when they came down, it was Rise more defeating themselves than it was about Oglus having a good set. This is pretty standard coming out from them, although I do like the frost coming out from my man. Yeah, not so much frost. Um, it's not an operator that you that you always see, but I would say frost mats win rounds and just, you know, in strange positions or strange locations, it's always one. I mean, I really like that one there, just inside of break room, just the other side of the, uh, of the little half wall there. That's a popular spot for people to kind of jump in, jump straight over. And, uh, and get caught out there. But Yeti is going to be playing this spot again over in CCTV. And he's been pretty well established here for throughout the entire of this game. Um, it's been his uh, it's been his hotspot. It's been where he enjoys playing. And I, I think that they've got to, there's got to be a point where Ryze are going to have to learn how to deal with that. Maybe it's a nade spot. Maybe it's going underneath and applying some pressure. Um, but you can see there my man is just trying to maybe bait out some more grenades um, and a couple of drones there. I think one of his frost mats perhaps there got destroyed but looks like he might be tempted to go for a bit of a run out there onto Beastly. Uh, I'm not sure if Beastly is aware of his presence there in CCTV. The run out does come. My man picks up a kill onto Vandal. Hyper there trading it straight back out though. So the run out did come, but just onto somebody else. Yeti there is going to make a small rotation and uh, perhaps maybe look to get his way all the way up East Stairs and just assist from that angle, having maybe lost a little bit too much of CC control now with, uh, with all the pressure that's coming onto the West. Balcony crazy playing his spot over in offices and Acid just waiting things out on the mirror as the nades do come flying. There is a down, so I think that frost mat has actually caught somebody over in CCTV. Ghost there gonna pick up a kill onto Crazy from East Stairs. But I don't think there's anyone to convert that kill over in CC, which is a massive shame because the frost mat there has really done its job. Um, but Yeti has, uh, has since rotated out. But he's back on main stairs now, just holding an angle onto break room. As, uh, as he's just trying to make uh, make something happen here, but looking pretty good for Rise Nation. They've got a good amount of control there. We're going to see Beastly coming up the main stairs. It's going to force Yeti yet again to rotate back. He's probably wishing at that point it was a three speed to make a bit of a stairs rotation uh, down the hatch as he just holds on to break. Doesn't quite manage to connect. Yeah, not just quite yet, but we're going to get into the last 30 seconds of the round. Now, without the Yin coming out from Rise, it's going to be very difficult. Hyper's going to go below. He's going to make sure he can get all this open up as Acid picks off Hyper, though, before he can really do much with that. Great pick coming out from Acid there through the vertical play from the half wall. And now it's a 3v4, but Orglis, sorry, a 3v3, because now Orglis are in still a pretty good situation, though. I'm pretty sure Acid does still have a Nitro on the board, and I'm pretty sure all three smokes are on the board here as well. So there should be good peaks coming out. They have all the plant denial they need in the word world, and August just needs to hold on. There we go, smokes are gonna come out. The push just come through. Acid takes one down, but instantly gets traded out. There we go, Beastly just get the trade, but the shotgun comes out to deny the plant going down. August take round number four by default. Really good coming out from them. And a great setup indeed. And you know, you mentioned about Frost getting a little bit aggressive there. My man gets traded out by Hyper, but he took down the Ying. Oh, big! No matter what, it was—it was—it was definitely a—it was a worthwhile sacrifice because the frost mats were already in play, 
and the frost mats then went on to do the job it was just unfortunate that there was no one there to convert the kill but it obviously took half health off somebody because they had to get reset and it, you know it, it plays into further than than just him running out and getting the kill so he did a fantastic job getting rid of the ying because in those final stages if that had been a ying push at that point it possibly could have been a little bit different yeah definitely it's also been interesting that they're still hiding the iq ying coming out here Oil should be picking up on this by now, and I honestly am really surprised they're not bringing Echo or almost every single round because there's been no IQ coming out from Ryze. They've constantly been relying on this Ying to go for their pushes, and it's getting shut down completely. And as we mentioned earlier, Echo's a great counter to Ying. Yeah, I think it, it is strange when it's available but not being played, and yet they are choosing to play two other ACOGs. And I know the ACOGs that they're playing are going to be they're going to be looking to get um, other benefits off them in terms of the, the play armor uh, and the stim pistols and docks, and maybe kind of counter some of the grenade play that's coming out. But I don't know if we've seen all too much effective grenade play thus far. Uh, so it'd certainly be worth bringing the Echo for a round and just seeing how it was able to work because the way that Rise Nation are pushing this at the minute is they're setting themselves up for late executes but not leaving themselves a lot of time in those final dying seconds and it's costing them at this point so if all of us read into that and i know they've done a great job so far but if they just read into that a little bit and they go if we can have two yokai drones or even one yokai drone in those dying seconds that's just going to aid our sort of late game so so much because rise are really not giving themselves enough time yeah, no, they haven't been giving themselves enough time indeed. But again, the same cell coming out from Orglus, they're holding onto CC every single time. And as you said, we haven't really seen Ryze respond to this very well. They've not been able to take control of CCTV, not once, but Ghost immediately picks up Crazy. That's the pulse off the board immediately. Great job coming out there from Ryze Nation to quickly pick off the pulse and deny quite a heavy bit of intel coming out from Orglus. Yeah, a lot of intel and a lot of utility there. Obviously, the C4, um, they'd be looking to make good use of that late on into the round. And like I say, the cardiac scanner, very good way of telling where the push is actually going to be coming from. So to lose that within the first sort of 50 seconds, a little bit of a shame there. Um, but Ghost, seeing an opportunity, taking it with both hands and able to pick up that kill. And, uh, you know, turn the tide a little bit more. So Yeti still going to be playing his cubby in CC. We might even need to start calling that Yeti Corner. Uh, I'm not sure just yet. But uh, he's, he's still doing a good job. And the drones are coming in. Everybody knows that that's where he's playing. But the push just doesn't seem to be coming in. Acid there. Managing to avoid the Candelas as Vandal does follow them up. And, ooh, I thought that Acid was going to get that kill. So Brian's going to get one onto Ghost. But Vandal is going to get that kill onto Acid. So Candelas or not, he does still manage to get the job done. Beastly there, going to pick up that kill onto Yeti. So he's found the angle. They've managed to bait him out with a drone and force him to move out of his corner. But I do think that that's going to leave Rise Nation still in a pretty good situation. Um, they've got plenty of time left on the clock now to make this final execute in the last minute. And there's going to be only two members of Orglis remaining in my man and Brian. But still a little bit of deniability there. We're going to have some smokes, but my man is going to get punished there by Hyper as Brian now tries to make something happen in this one versus four situation. Five, Toxic Bays five, are going to come out. Candelas are coming out as well. And he's just beginning to push from every single angle. Vandal's going to pick up that final kill. And that's going to be an attacking round for Rise. Great job coming out from Rise there to just capitalize on the fact that Orglus were playing so far apart from each other. And even though they're avoiding the Candelas, really, Ying is still pushing. She's still coming right up to you. And I think that, I mean, we, we didn't get to see his perspective, but I think that when Acid is getting pushed there, he's ADSing with the ACOG. And I think that the ACOG blocked as Vandal crouched into there. So uh, may, maybe we can only really speculate on what happened there. But I really thought that Acid would have won that fight for sure. But it's not going to go through just yet for them. Ventilation Room Workshop is going to be the next defense coming out from Orglas. And again, we're going to see the exact same six of it coming out from Rise. But yeah, this I like this from Orglas that they're now picking off the dock and they're bringing a Val because they're recognizing to locate and defuse Rise Val. Nation are not taking an IQ at all. Not only are they going to take the Val, but they're going to take the Echo as well. So it's yeah. like we're getting all our wishes. Uh, <laughs> Acid there is going to switch on to the, the Echo. And that's really going to help them. And I think that... If they'd have had an Echo last round, perhaps, 
it would have been a little bit easier for them to maybe assist the Romas with the cameras and the and the disorientating effect of the yokai. Um, and also it's going to change things up a little bit because Yeti is no longer going to be in Yeti's corner in CCTV. He's going to be a little bit of an unknown entity this time, but they're still going to reinforce it as if he's there. So there could be a little bit of a bait and switch going on here and maybe it's going to cause Rise Nation to avoid that area a little bit perhaps. As, uh, as they anticipate the ACOG that's going to be playing in there, but Attackers it's going to be Valkyrie and, uh, and some Valkyrie comes for some bomb. intel. Defender anyway, it's going to get a nice one outside there here. on the lamppost. That's going to provide him a good view of anybody that's repelling up onto that west side. He's just calling out there for a bit of a rotate to be made. So he's still going to play his corner, but he's probably going to play it a little bit differently this time because he's not got the ACOG in hand. Well, not just that, he can't play too aggressively off of it, but now he has the extra intel coming out in forms of, I'm hoping, Legion Mines are somewhere upstairs, at least one of them. And, you know, he's also going to have Echo Drones on the board at some point as well, so he knows where the push is going to be coming from. And, of course, he has his Valkyrie house as well. And it's pretty hard for Rise Nation to really pick off a decent amount of that intel because he's not bringing IQ. Which is something weird because the kind of sticks picking off it every time and I think the, there becomes a point where you've got to ask yourself are you getting the most out of all the operators that you're bringing or can you sacrifice one of them to bring the IQ and I think perhaps at this point it could be the book. I know that he's been making some really good holes and stuff like that but ultimately Sledge can do most of that or maybe it's the Sledge, I don't know, maybe one of the two could just be switched out for an IQ for a round and just see how they do get on with it because uh, Acid is able to operate currently in CCT in, uh, in customs downstairs for free as, uh, as he makes his way upstairs just to assist his roamers on, uh, on gathering any information as to where the push is going to be coming from. And you can see there they're just setting up for this Ying push again because this is something that they did suffer from last time and, and if that just allows anyone that's playing over an armory to play there for a little bit longer it's definitely a worthwhile use of the utility. Yeah and again you know great counters the Ying coming out across the board we've got smokes coming out we've got uh, Legion coming out, we've got Echo coming out. These are all great counters to stop this push going down. And the fact that they're constantly avoiding these Candelas. I mean, the Candelas are really being used by Vandal here, mo mostly just to push out defenders rather than actually kill them. But that might be a big misstep coming out because these could be very easy kills coming out from Rise right now. And they're not really capitalizing on that much. They're letting the Romas escape and they're letting them push back. And that is just leaving more utility on site. Yeah, I mean, you can't argue with how Orglas are setting themselves up. They're really setting themselves up for these rotations. And it does just go to show why they've been so successful on border to date, because they've just got such a good handle on how they're going to play the map and how long they're going to hold something before they're going to rotate off it. Like you say, the Candelas are almost becoming crowd control, just trying to push people from one room to the next. But ultimately, that's just allowing the members of Orglas to just get back down onto site. We're in the final 30 seconds now, and the push is going to have to start coming from somewhere. But it seems as though Ryze aren't happy with the upstairs control that they've taken, or maybe Beastly just there waiting for someone that he believes is, is, is still playing upstairs, whereas everyone's now down on the site. And this is where the Yokai drones and the smoke canisters are going to become really, really valuable. Yes. Yeah, they are. We're going to see this backside push coming down. Just the last 10 seconds remaining, and everyone is still on the board. Rise is going to try and move in. Candelas are going to go out there trying to make their way into the site. Yes, he pushes round as a customs. He's going to lose the fight, but Orgles will take round number six. It's crazy. will deny the plant from Vandal. Great round coming out there from Orgles, and just, again, wasting their time, keeping sure that they have all their utility available to them so they can push up and they can take those fights. But now Orgles going to move through onto the attack. Looking really good for them because they're 4 2 up. And without the Jaeger, this ought to be very attacker sided right now. It's all about how they're going to play into that Jaeger ban and if they're going to make and take good advantage of it. You can see there that Orglus are going to waste no time. They're going to bring both the IQ and the Thatcher. So the Thatcher is going to be able to disable any Yokai drones that may get six picked onto. We've not seen one picked yet. Um, although we're going to see a switch, a Roo there from Bandit onto the dock for Hyper. Um, but yeah, bringing out the Thatcher and the IQ, that really says, right, whatever electronics and utility you've got, we're going to disable them, we're going to find them, we're going to destroy them. Um, so a real search and destroy mission there on the electronics for uh, Orglis. And, and like you say, it bomb. should be a little bit attack favor, but we're only bringing one set of nades. But I kind of like that because I'm not sure that the two sets were really doing all too much. Yeah, I mean, we talked about sort of grenade efficiency coming through. We didn't see really where these, these nades were going through. And uh, I really just don't think they were adding in that much, as you, as you said. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen as we move further into these rounds and how Orglus are going to change it up. And, you know, we're already seeing changes, as you said, the IQ coming out. That is so good coming out from Orglus because it's going to deny 
everything that Ryze has to actually bring in plant denial here. And Orgos aren't relying around around the Ying. Maybe the Ying would be a good play. It definitely gave Ryze a couple of wins. But I feel like it's just too easy to counter. I feel it, was, it was down to the way they were using it. There's, there's multiple ways to use Ying as an operator. You can either be going for the you know shock and awe effect of trying to flash people and get them out, or you can use it the way that uh, Rise were using it, and they were doing it as more of like, a, we're going to take this room and we're going to push you out by using a candela. You're going to rotate because you don't want to lose your life in that spot. You're going to rotate back to site. And it worked to a point, but ultimately you've still got to deal with that defender once you get down to site. And I think that was just something that they weren't leaving themselves enough time later on for. Um, and then that's maybe caused a little bit of the uh, of, of the struggle maybe that Rise felt on their attacking rounds. Um, nice to see a mirror out on the table. Yeah, I do love that mirror. mirror. And, yeah. you know, I mean, from Rise here as well, we got to think, them playing the mirror uh, where they are is just such a strong position to have. But the counteract to that is that Oglas have a book on the board. And, you know, they have nades on the board, they have Ash on the board here. There's so much for Orgles to do to deal with mirrors on this. And, you know, they don't even have the Twitch. Yes, he almost died. Wow. That would have been unfortunate. The, uh, the old exothermic charge would uh, would have definitely made short work of him. But he managed to get out of the way. Luckily, he's, uh, he's 10 speed Ash, so it's uh, it's no mean feat to, to dive across the map in a matter of seconds. There I really I really don't like that mirror window they have a passport. I like that they're holding down passport like that and they have the reinforcements down. But that mirror can instantly get popped from above very, very easily. And Yeti should made it all the way in. He's got control of the mirror. He's going to peek him out. Beautiful from Yeti. And he's already got the first kill on the board. This is just so much utility wasted coming out from Rise Nation. They've lost so much control already. I'm not sure how that happens because if you're going to be playing the mirror and you're going to rotate off it, surely you should be thinking it's about destroying the canister in it and dropping the glass before that point. But to rotate off it and leave it there and then stand the other side of it as beastly, that's uh, a little bit of an oversight there. Mirror's going to try and challenge back onto her own. Does manage to get a down onto Yeti, but can't quite convert the kill as Yeti's just able to crawl out of the way. Vandal not going to push that. Um, he's not really got much need to at this stage. It's, it's a case of if he pushes it, he's very likely to lose his life in that scenario but the uh, the cast barricade there is going to force crazy and brian to push on through tellers do you mind they're going to make sure that everybody knows exactly where he is and crazy maybe going to look to try and pick up his fallen teammate in yeti but ultimately the time is running very short there's not a lot of hit points left on the team of orglis and as i say that england is going to pick up the kill onto my man so but no longer going to be a factor. Crazy going to lose a heck of a lot of hit points as well. Yeti has been revived, does take out Ghost. Vandal is going to trade that straight out. Acid there going to come up with a kill of his own as he's peeking on into the site. Makes that a double, picking up one onto Hyper. England just getting caught in the reload, but does manage to get the kill onto Acid. Brian going to finish things off with a kill onto England, and that's going to be a round on the board for the attackers. Yeah, really well done from Orgulus there. Just to capitalize on what was a very weird setup coming out from Rise Nation, especially the mirrors. As I said, that it was a good mirror initially coming out on supply because it can completely cut off uh, the attacker's ability to take over that hallway. But if you have the classic Yeti crouch walking Ash, who moves through detention, which there was a thermite charge on, it's very loud. So you gotta know that someone's gonna be pushing through that. And as you said, pointed out very rightly, if you're going to give up that position for a mirror, don't give it to the attackers. Just destroy the canister and rotate out. Yeah, surely pop the mirror, rotate out, I guess. In the heat of the moment, you're going to maybe want to try and run out. But it's, I don't know. It's one of those things where you think to yourself, am I going to die if I waste a second trying to pop this? Is he going to be able to shoot me in the back as I rotate through the door? Because it wasn't a rotatable hole to the left of the mirror. It was just a single shot. Multiple things come into play there, but ultimately I think Rise just didn't quite hold what they'd set up well enough. And it was set up in quite a specific way as to if they lost that control, it was always going to sort of play very heavily against them. They were definitely expecting a very different push coming out from Orgulus. And honestly, I get the impression from Rise they're kind of fighting against themselves, that they're setting it up, expecting a Ying push, or uh, alternatively, specifically there, they were expecting a backside take. They were expecting th the same take that they did. They were coming through archives. They took control of there. They were just holding down flanks, and then they pushed down, and they came through the back room. For that, those mirrors are great. But Orglus see those mirrors and will say, we're not going to push backside. We're not even going to take control. We're going to use the thermite detention instead and just tear this entire defense apart. And at that point, 
Riot Nation have no choice. They have to give up pretty much all of their utility in customs. Yeah, it is one of the, it's sort of the balancing factor, I guess, of mirrors that you really invest it heavily into one single location. And as soon as you give up that location or lose it, it's something that doesn't really play heavily into your favor at all. We're seeing much more of a typical setup this time, I'd guess, with the mirror on the fountain wall. That's going to be an area that it, it's no advantage. Once the attackers have taken over that area, the really, mirror really doesn't come into too much play at all. But it's a very powerful position to play off. As, uh, as you do tend to be able to hold quite a lot of office control from there. And uh, Rise Nation there just sort of anticipating that, that backside push again. As, uh, but Brian's there going to make his way up into CCTV and maybe look to open the main wall. As uh, Oh, the main wall is already open, sorry. So the main wall is open and uh, it's all going to be about where the push does decide to come from now. What's interesting about this as well is they've been allowed to do a box take, take control of CCTV and we're not even halfway into the round yet. There was no hold coming out from Rice, despite the fact they have a mirror here. And playing that mirror in the hallway is such a powerful position, and you know it is because Orglus played it as if they had a mirror there. They put a bulletproof camel to 90 where the mirror would normally be, facing Easters, and Rise were never able to successfully take over CC without losing quite a lot of bodies. No, and I think that comes that, that comes to show the difference in the play styles here is that Rise, like say, weren't able to take anything off, off CCTV, whereas on their defensive rounds, they're just kind of giving it up free and they're just saying, look, you know, you can just go and play in there. And it looks as though we may even be seeing a plan coming down pretty soon as that just come in to destroy any remaining utility as uh, my man there is going to pick up a grenade kill there. So he's, uh, he's going to prove us all wrong for saying that there's been a lack of good grenade play and Beastly there going to pick up a C4 kill of his own onto Yeti Acid going to be picking up a kill onto Vandal and there's some good information being fed back from the pulse downstairs on Ghost as to where the push is coming from where the plant's coming from and uh, just on the members of Rise now just holding back a little bit I feel like it maybe should have pushed up a little bit there but Ghost is going to get a kill onto Brian but it is going to be too late the diffuser is already down and now Rise are faced with a bit of a tricky retake in this scenario as they did have two players playing downstairs off site Acid just going to be holding an angle there onto the box and uh, just waiting for anyone that decides to peek through. There he is, he's going to pick up his kill onto Hyper. Just pick up another one onto Ghost. And uh, final kill there, going to come out onto Beastly. Much better round there from Orglus, I think. Yeah, really good round coming out from Orglus there. They use their utility correctly. But again, I, I just feel like Rise Nation are defending the wrong side here. They're not setting up in CC. They're dedicating all of their utility to pretty much just one side. And then... So, so you notice there that they had three Nitros below to completely deny the box take. And two of them actually got kills. So it was actually very, very good coming out from them. But that, at that point, it was very stagnated because they're all throwing them out pretty much at the same time. And meanwhile, you have three people downstairs. No one's playing like shotgun or anything like that. So it's not like they can actively open up kill holes and deny the plant again that way. And meanwhile, you've got three people downstairs Oglus taking control of the site and they're planting. You have no control and I think Rise Nation just let their emotions go. Attackers yeah, like you say, there's, there's a point where you've got to rotate back up to site and actually be active and be able to, to do something about any sort of push that's coming through or the plant that's going down. And I think you can't really take anything away from Oglus because they saw an opportunity and they took it and they didn't really go chasing the Romans too hard downstairs. They just took good control of CCTV, opened the wall and they were able to play mostly just off those two things. And it goes to what we were saying earlier on about how important CCTV control is and that it's something that you've pretty much got to take every single time you're going to be attacking this site. And with the way that Rise Nation just totally gave it up, it allowed them almost to free in to be able to operate in that outside area, outside main armory wall, and uh, ultimately get the plants off and, and pick up the kills as the retake started to come through. I would really like to see at some point, especially now that Rise are bringing out the bandit, a Maverick coming out from Orgles. Yeah, I mean, Maverick's not an operator that you see a ton, I guess. He, he sees a little bit of ban, but I think they seem to be doing very well with what they're doing so far on attack. I think that the Thatcher and IQ combination is working pretty well in conjunction with each other. Like you say, the Bandit is there, um, so the, there is the potential to maybe get a trick off there, but then we've got the book underneath, so it all sort of plays off against each other. My my main issue with bringing the Thatcher and the IQ here is there's no Jaeger, and normally when you're doing this combo, 
it to like EMP the like the roof or something like that, so you can get rid of ADSs and you can quickly push off of it. You don't even have to worry about that. You don't have to waste any time doing that. I honestly don't think, that, and I'm a big advocate for bringing a Thatcher pretty much every round. I don't honestly think that the Thatcher is adding in that much, considering the lineup coming out from Horizon Nation. Pretty much every single time, I honestly believe that you only need the IQ here. You have the book you can below, go below, and you can take off the bandits off the wall. And you have nades on the table with no, you know, no Jaegers, no ADSs. So it should be much easier for them to actually push up. And I think Orgles are stagnating themselves a little bit. But at the same time, they're doing very well with it. Really good play from Hype coming out there. He's going to save his bandit charge, successfully put it back on again. That's going to be out a lot more utility than Orgles really want to use it. Yeah, they've definitely spent a lot of time trying to take over this office. C4 in hand now from Hyper. Just getting tempted to uh, to maybe do something with it. Flash grenades are going to come out. And it is going to, unfortunately for him, get caught with one of them. The nade comes out as well, but it does miss. He's able to get back onto his mirror and, uh, and challenge this. But he's wasting a lot of time and he's doing a very good job. You can see there Yeti is going to push up and just make his way over toward the main door just near the hatch. Hyper is almost certainly going to see that. Drones are going to come out as well. So the pressure's really on there for Hyper, but as I say that, Acid is operating for free over in CCTV and can maybe come in to assist this in some way. Acid, they're going to pick up the kill onto Ghost. A man is going for the sneak. He's sneaking around the corner. Hyper is ready on the angle and he is there ready to get the kill. Does manage oh. to make that a double as yet. He runs in to try and get that kill and make that a trade, but no, no, no. Hyper is able to pick up that kill and replace his battery. So he's going to be able to hold Fountain that little bit longer. He's done a great job there. He's been playing that angle for, for over a minute at that point and he's able to pick up two kills off it and pretty much shut down the push coming from the rear as uh, as the Hibana charge now comes out to open up um, but he's, he's done a great job there the 20 seconds left on the clock there's very very little time now for all to make any sort of execute Brian they're gonna pre-fire the wrong spot hyper unfortunately again for him did get himself caught in a flash as, uh, as the plant is almost certainly going to have to come down now. Acid, they're going to pick up the kill onto England. The Yokai drone is going to be there to deny anything. Vandal's going to get one onto Acid. Brian's going to get one of his own. It's all down to Vandal now. He does pick up one kill onto Crazy, and he's ready there to deny the plant, and he manages it. That's going to be a great play there from Vandal. Getting the last kill and denying the plant all in the final few seconds. Absolutely beautiful coming out from Vandal, but honestly, that round was won and lost around hype. how Hyper played that fountain wall, because... There's no ADS. Ogles know there's only one person playing that fountain wall. So they have multiple ways in which they can do it. Okay, they're gonna like, yeah, we'll throw an EMP, we'll get rid of that mirror. Oh, he's just bandit tricked again. Okay. Let's try and push up. Oh, he's thrown he's thrown a nitro out. He okay, now he's using utility. He, but he's wasting time in that position, and they're like, okay, now we need to make a play. We're opening up archives wall. We need to deal with this guy in fountain. Let's just, you know, crouch walk all the way up. Let's try and catch him by surprise. And if you die, don't worry, I'm going to refrag you. But guess what? It's Hyper R6. Don't worry. He's got it. He's going to just slam two people off the ground. <laughs> and not only that, his repositioning was so Attackers good. And it really screams to Oglis, again, just the lack of persistent droning that's coming out and the lack of intel. It's something that Rise Nation were dealing with a lot worse during their attacks. It's coming out from Oglis again that Brian is flashbanging out. And he's pre-firing where he thinks Brian should be, where where Hyper should be at that point. He goes for that, and it's a good thing that Hyper was flashed at that point, because Brian would have died, and Hyper would have got 3k playing the same exact area. What should have happened here from Orglus, and if, and I believe that if there had been an ADS on the on the board here, and if he could be a possibility, they would have done this instead. They should have gone Fountain once they got CC control, and opened up that instead of the Havana. Yeah, it, it makes it a lot harder to play in the fountain area if you're getting the back open as well as you're getting some pressure from the front. So, like I said, that's something that would be is a little bit more achievable if you do bring the double hard breach. I know you're going to lose out on a little bit of utility elsewhere, but you are going to be able to... Oh, look at this peak that's coming out. Doesn't quite manage it. Gets punished for it. Hyper there has gone from hero to zero in the space of a round as, uh, as he just tries a very strange crawl into the barricade kind of a run out peak. But uh, he's, Acid is there to pick up that kill and uh, makes very short work of him. So no doubt his teammates on Rise are going to be screaming at him for that one. Because no, uh, it's, it's a good run out to do, right? Because if you open up the bottom of the barricade and you crouch under it instead. So as you come out of Valley spawn, you're going to check that door and you're going to go, oh, it's closed. And you're going to look away and then all of a sudden, Hyper's there and he's going to kill you. But, I mean, Orglus are a little bit too smart for that. Also, Hyper misses shot and then he tries to come in and then bam, he's instantrated. But... 
I think it's I think it's honestly it's just one of those things where he wouldn't have done the spawn peak unless they had told him to do that. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're at that. Yeah, you, you're definitely right there. There's obviously some reason behind it, but it, I don't know. In the position that they're in, when Orglas are on match point, it does just seem a little bit careless at that stage because he's had such, he's gone from having such a great round and being so it's so important there. That they're just going to be losing out on that manpower, but. Ghost there is going to even up the odds a little bit and take out Brian as uh, the Hibana there is going to fall. And that's going to be quite big because nothing's been opened as yet, but no droning going to be coming out from Yeti and Vandal's going to punish him. Playing in the fountain angle, just really not expecting him there. Vandal there possibly even playing off some intel on uh, on one of his Valkyrie cameras that he's got. England just going to be holding the bottom of stairs and Teller and uh, making a rotate back all the way down onto, uh, onto bathroom. Just getting himself ready to get back into sight. As the smoke there, he's not really going to want to push that all too much at all. But my man's going to get the flick there onto Vandal. The MPX there, not doing Vandal any favours as, uh, as the body shots come in. But ultimately, were not enough uh, onto, onto the book of my man there. So Ghost is going to be, I think, one of the only remaining attackers, uh, sorry, defenders playing upstairs. As, uh, as the pulse information is now coming out from Beastly. As he's just going to be deciding where this push, or finding out, sorry, where this push is going to be coming from. And it looks as though Ghost is itching to get going there. He's definitely ready for some sort of a peek onto Archive, but my man there is waiting for it. The drone work is going to be coming out this time from Acid. Not going to be making the same mistake twice with uh, with poor drone work. So no doubt he's going to get found there as the frag grenade, I think, comes out. Crazy's going to push in. Beastly going to pick up a C4 kill onto my man. That's going to make Ghost Joe a bit easier. He managed to pick up a double in the end and get a kill onto both. Both crazy and acid. What a great play from Legion there. Absolutely amazing from Ghost. I mean, he gets a 3k overall, just holding down upstairs the entire round. He plays it really well. Uh, sorry, 4k because he actually he picks the Habana, and then Yeti moves into Fountain, isn't even looking at him. And that was the big thing for me is that August not only having problems with persistent droning here and keeping up to date where the defenders are playing, Yeti is peeking out, expecting this Legion to be in archives. And he completely peeks it the wrong way. He doesn't even check the corner because he's that confident there's no one playing Fountain right now. And he goes down for it. And Orglas are just getting punished so, so heavily for the lack of intel on their part. And it's something that Rise came up with badly as well. We are going to see a Thermite finally on the board coming out from Brian here. As uh, we are going to see a Customs and Supply Room defense. How many times have we seen teams get themselves up to match point and just not able to convert that and not able to carry Defense, the momentum through to be able to take that first map win? Because looking at the, the way that the first phase went when August were on defence and the first couple of rounds they had on attack, you just think that this was a, a clean stretch for them. But Rise Nation have really woken up and they've really started to bring their A game. And it's just really sort of flowing in, in Rise Nation's favour at this point. I feel like they've got the momentum and I, I think this could go you know, all the way. I think we could be seeing them picking up another couple of rounds here and just nicking this one away from all of us. You kind of played that out like it, was a, like it was a charity ad. You know, how many times do we see teams unable to close out matches? Please donate, <laughs> donate. today to stop teams from not being able to close out and completely choking the match. But we're going to get through. It's going to be 6-4 to Oil so far. Still match point on, here, on the border, which, you know, we're expecting to be a good victory for them coming out. But we also make the point that not only is Rise comfortable with this map, clearly both both teams are. We talked about how how competitive Border is, how pretty much every team knows it very well, and that may have been affecting how Orcs have been playing around it. But also, on top of that, there's been a weird ban coming out, and there's not every day you see a Jaeger ban coming out on Border. It can be very weird to play and play around. It just opens a lot of things up on the attacker side of things, you know, and the defender side of things as well, because you obviously end up with well, with the way that the band's played out this time, you end up with both Echo and Mirror with the Maestro being banned. Um, Yeti being hyper-aggressive here, still got the Breach of Charge in hand, and he's going to be able to open up Archives into Armory as well. Just doing some pre-fires out to make a little bit of a peak hole seat if he can find anything. Looks like Yeti's a bit of a man on a mission at this stage. It seems like he wants to close this one out with the way that he, he ran in with a lot of purpose there over into, uh, into Office. Manages to get past Fountain as well, which is something that uh, Rise have struggled with in the last couple of rounds, all the way into Armory. And now they're able to play off a mirror that was placed in armory. The Echo Drone is going to be there, but Yeti is going to find it, not before getting flashed. This time, I think the mirror window has been opened by Rise Nation, so they've, uh, they've certainly learnt from previous errors there as to when uh, when Yeti's been able to rush in and, and take control of a mirror. And is the castle going to peak this? Because it certainly looks as though they're going to be lining up for a double kill there. Claymore's going to get placed out, and it's going to be crazy, and Yeti 
just trying to take over some CCTV control as uh, as Acid is going to come to the aid as well. And Ghost going to pick up the kill onto Crazy. But that's actually going to be a straight trade because Crazy is going to get the kill back onto Ghost at the same time. Vandal, ooh, unfortunately for him, doesn't manage to find the angle onto Yeti. And Yeti is able to pick up that kill. So slowly, Olgus are able to take CCTV control and move on to the site. My man there finding himself down in vents. Just getting ready to challenge onto stairs. Does pick up the kill onto a prone England there on smoke. Not the best operator to be losing in the final minute. Currently it sits at four versus two in favor of Orglis. Having said that, Acid there gonna pick up the kill onto Beastly. So it's now all gonna be down to Hyper on the Echo. And this surely is looking like game for Orglis at this stage. Although Hyper does get a kill onto the IQ. Just misses his shots there onto Yeti. Manages to draw for the bearing. Doesn't convert the kill. Yeti going to pick up that final kill. And uh, I think a long time coming there for August. They were on match point for a couple of rounds. But uh, judging off that last judging off that last attack, they certainly deserved it. They certainly deserved it indeed. You see Acid, he's pulled out the IQ MVP, of course. And then we're going to see August, who do take map number one. Very well deserved victory for them on border. But that's not a big surprise. But it's a surprise on the Yig, man, I would say.